Everyone, this is Rob Roy, and welcome to this week's U.S. Market Update. It's just after 4 p.m. on Friday, June 9th. Hope everybody's had a great week. You can see on the screen we have the uh, chart of the S&P. We just finished our live Q&A earlier over on uh, the Hub Financial channel. Uh, if you haven't registered, go over there and register. You can see our uh, live Q&A uh, every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So for the uh, update here. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to remind everyone of the zigzags that we've been looking at for months and months, starting with this big zigzag all the way back here from October. Uh, and there was that big move with a potential target at 436. So we've been talking about that for a long time. You can see that uh, we broke above 420 and have kind of consolidated and tried to go a little bit higher today, but finished with a doji. The economic news this week was the jobless claims number that came out yesterday and was worse than expected. Uh, so more people filing for uh, uh, jobless claims than going back to uh, towards the end of 2021, so during COVID. Uh, and so the question is, is bad news now becoming good news? Clearly the Federal Reserve is getting their wish, but at what point does that start to hurt consumer spending, uh, et cetera? So I guess the viewpoint is with the fact that we didn't go uh, down yesterday, we actually had an update. Uh, the Fed has um, done their job and we're looking towards that point of a rate cut, whether we get one more rate hike or not. We've talked about that in the past, so I won't spend any more time talking about it. Uh, but we did talk about this in Tuesday night's Trade Finder. Uh, and if you haven't attended a Trade Finder yet, uh, you can register here or go to our website, ewotrader.com, and register there every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. We talk to markets, we look for trade ideas, and we have a Q&A. And in the Q&A, uh, we had a comment of somebody saying, hey, Rob's going to be bearish until we're at all-time highs. And I've been cautious uh, on this rally, uh, but I don't feel like I've been bearish, especially with these targets. And then you look at the LA Wave chart and note the relabeling here where we're just focused on this last piece of the move to the upside in a five-wave pattern. We had a 38.2% wave for correction, which gives us about a 61.8% extension. And so if we put another zigzag there, you'll be able to see that, yeah, we have a, a 440 target there. So 436 on the big zigzag. And then with the complex C wave zigzag that we have, uh, it's giving us 440. So we're getting in the area of hitting those targets that we were talking about uh, at the end of last year and specifically around December when we had that pivot on that first B wave. So um, we've been showing uh, a bullish bias to the market. I still think cautious optimism is the key and maybe moving more towards just being cautious at this point in time uh, is a prudent thing to do. Clearly we've had some particular stocks that have been racing to the upside, but when you have two LA wave patterns, and in this instance, one of my favorite patterns, the zigzag, giving you targets this close together and not very far away from where we are, perhaps a little bit more of a drift to the upside. And then we have to uh, at least keep in mind the potential for some sort of a corrective move. So I thought it was time to revisit the zigzag, if you will. Now, there's that doji that we finished on today. If we look at the 10-day moving average, you can see that uh, following this uh, break to the upside on June 2nd, we consolidated that for about a week, uh, open higher, tried to trade up, and then came back down and just closed at the open. So uh, we'll see what happens on Monday based on this uh, doji uh, at the close today. So perhaps a little bit more to the upside, but we're awfully close to both those uh, zigzag targets. So I still say uh, being prudent right now is the key. Uh, be careful about being too optimistic stock pickers market right now, picking and choosing particular spots. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at interest rates real quick. And then I'll look at the uh, rest of the uh, markets. You can look at the uh, TNX uh, on the 10 year and it's consolidating as well. You can see that we're consolidating here uh, on interest rates. And on top of that, the uh, yield spread uh, the twos versus tens, which I'll bring that up and show you, has widened uh, again, uh, which uh, is hinting at, uh, you know, a recession, uh, which 
it doesn't seem to be uh, coming to fruition just yet, but the spread has gotten a bit wider, up to about 78 basis points between the twos and tens. And last time we got to 100 basis points is when we saw the issues with the regional banks. So another thing to keep an eye on there. So looking at the rest of the markets, if we take a look at the diamonds, we'll take a look at the DIA. Uh, and we've been, as you know, between 330 and 340 uh, for quite some time. And now we're bumping against the upper end of that range. So there's the support line at 330. And then we take a look at the resistance line here at 340. And that's a pretty nice march uh, to the upside there. Looking at the 10 day moving average, got a little bit overbought there as well back on the second and then we came back down towards it so we rectified it with a doji there moved back to the upside is that what's going to happen on monday with the doji on the s p uh, but if we break above 340 uh, there was a lot of chatter on the financial networks today that the shorts are going to have to cover and that could be one more spark to the upside on this rally but it's important to remember that if we go back and look at the s p that we are two standard deviations away uh, from the 50-day moving average, which is normally when we get uh, to a point where uh, it becomes concern, and P ratios are you know is 21 times earnings is where we are now, which is also an elevated value. So you trade what the charts are telling you. Clearly, they're showing a move to the upside, but I stand by still being cautious at this time frame. Looking at the Qs. Uh, again, which we talked about during that live Q&A with uh, all the stocks that you're all familiar with them now. Uh, anything that said AI, we talked about those quite a bit last week. Notice the doji there as well. So even on the Qs. So we had this vertical move up. We came back to the 10-day moving average. There's that rule that we talk about so often. No security in any time frame gets very far away from the 10-day moving average. Uh, and here we are back down towards uh, uh, 350 uh, and then a little bit of a bounce back uh, to the upside here with that doji. So um, at some point in time, we are going to create uh, a wave four. And are we getting near that area? Uh, I think uh, bringing the DMI on is uh, important here because that's our indicator within wave threes on when is it about to end because that's the difficult part. Love trading the wave three, love trading zigzags within the wave three, strongest of all waves. The difficult part is when is the wave four correction start? That's the hardest part of trading the wave three, in my opinion. And you can see that we touched 40, kind of ticked down a little bit. I haven't really rolled over, just gone a bit sideways. Uh, started to have a little bit of a move down with the uh, positive directional indicator indicating buying pressure. It ticked back up today. So a little bit of a tick down in the negative directional indicator. So that, that may not be the end of the rally here uh, on the queues. But again, things are just to the point where be cautious, tighten your stops, trade what the charts are telling you. but tighten your stops. I think that's the theme uh, that we want to cover. Uh, and then we talked about the IWM in Tuesday night's trade finder as well. Finally coming to life, you can see here on the DMI is just about to trigger. So we're right at that 20 level on the ADX. If you're not familiar with the DMI, uh, for our alert subscribers at EWOTrader.com, we have a in-depth educational area where we talk about all these indicators that we look at. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, the ADX is broken above the negative directional indicator. You look for good separation between the two, but you need that ADX to break above 20. And you look at it and you say, well, it's going to on Monday. But there's a lot of times where that ADX will go up to 20 and then roll over. But if it breaks it, uh, that's a trigger. And you can look at small caps. Again, always try to review what people are hearing on the financial network. So you kind of have an idea. A lot of times the financial speak is uh, uh, almost like a different language. Uh, but we've come up above 180. We'd been in this tight trading range, you know, 170 to 190 had been the range for over a year. And then we tightened that range between 170 and 180. And clearly, based on some conversations that I've had with uh, uh, some uh, floor trader friends, people got caught off guard. There was some short interest here at 180. And that's why we had this big vertical move above their shorts covering. Uh, and now the danger is, are we going to go up and hit that 190 level uh, on the uh, um, IWM, which would be the top of that uh, trading range from before. So good separation here from the 10-day moving average. Maybe we need a little bit. We pull back a bit. Maybe we need a little bit more uh, consolidation here at the beginning of the week, but likely to head up towards that 190 level. Uh, it looks like on the IWM, that would be a positive moving forward. 
uh, as well, due to the fact that uh, uh, that was the resistance from going way back. So um, let's keep an eye on 190, see if we get there, maybe some uh, back and forth. But if we can get to 190, that could uh, add in. I would be about the same point that you'd see the S&P actually hit those zigzag targets. I think that would be a real telltale sign for whether or not this rally is going to have further legs or if we need to have a little bit of a pause in time. But clearly, a little more interest in risk uh, and a broadening of the market would be key. So uh, good looking chart there on the IWM. Now, um, Bitcoin. Uh, you know, um, Bitcoin, we've been talking about this for quite some time where it's been hanging on by a uh, a thread, if you will, on that 27,000 level. We're below it now. Uh, no follow through, though. Able to come back up a little bit from yesterday. I know uh, it trades 24 7, but they do give prints for end of day charting services like uh, what we're showing. So if you look at end of day charts, you can have that. Still have this big, massive descending triangle here. And uh, the news, uh, if you're watching, uh, from Kathy Wood, uh, if you pay attention to what she says, she said that uh, Bitcoin is going to go to a million by 2030. So uh, she's looking for an upside breakout, I believe, out of this descending triangle. And as a reminder, all the triangles are just breakouts. I know there's a lot of information. The descending triangle breaks to the downside, ascending breaks to the upside, symmetrical either way. Uh, I've done a tremendous amount of research on triangles, and I can tell you the data isn't there to support all that. Any of the triangles can break in either direction. So we're trying to sneak underneath it. I've reminded you in a nauseum here on the fact that we haven't really retraced uh, any of this vertical move that occurred from 20,000 up to 27. Maybe that's what we're doing now. Maybe we're retracing just a little bit of that. So far, even on those down days, we were able to hold this wave three high. Uh, we are getting near that uh, halving that occurs uh, the first quarter of next year. Historically, that's been a, a, a fire uh, lit under Bitcoin and then taken off for another run. So perhaps we break to the upside here just after, you know, kind of testing a little bit lower and then we shoot to the upside. So that could be a, uh, um, a move to the upside on, on the risk taking as well. In addition to the fact that if we do get uh, continued widening of that 210 spread and we start to see any sort of news about the regional banks uh, having trouble again. The Fed opened that facility. That seemed to squash it before. Uh, and it seemed like last time when we had this vertical move, when we had the uh, regional banking issue, people ran to the cryptos, uh, digital currency, uh, when they uh, became concerned about the banks. So uh, could those two things line up again? So lots to talk about there. But we've come down close, at least intraday, to get towards this uh, 25,000 level. Uh, and if we can break above this upper trend line, Moving into that uh, halving next year, we could have an upside breakout. So, uh, but still caution here. And if we were to break below 25,000, then we have to be very concerned about a potential test, uh, even all the way down here to this previous wave four. We're not there yet. Uh, and every time it tries to break, it's, it's met with some buying. So we've held in there so far, but certainly something to keep an eye on, I think, uh, in Bitcoin. Let's take a look at the VIX, and um, you know, we had a lot of chatter about this, uh, both in Tuesday night's Trade Finder as well as in last night's Insiders Meeting, which we do every Thursday night for our uh, alert subscribers at EvoTrader.com. Uh, and the question came up last night of, uh, is it time to go long the VIX? Uh, I used to trade the VIX, did very well back in the days when it was connected and uh, programmed to the OEX, when they changed it to the SPX. I've not had very good success trading the VIX at all. So I've washed my hands of it. I know some people pair it with the VXN and VXX and other types of, uh, of vehicles uh, from a volatility standpoint. If you can figure out a way to trade it, uh, good on you. Uh, but uh, taking a look, we broke significantly below 18. You know that. We got down here, bounced off 16. We broke that. And that's where the vertical part of the move came from. And note a little bit of a doji there, even on the VIX. Makes Mondays trade very interesting and we'll clearly have a lot to talk about uh, in next Tuesday's Trade Finder. Again, 9 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. It's free. So uh, we'll see if we're just going to bounce back to this 10-day moving average or move to the upside a little bit more. There is history to show. We can go lower. We've been down to 12. We're at 10 and 
a below eight in previous rallies. So if the market does break to the upside and we have a new leg, you know, there is history to show the VIX can go lower, but having this vertical move lower uh, is something to keep an eye on for at least a test, perhaps, uh, back up towards 18. Uh, it doesn't have to, but that happens often when you break a major point of support, and clearly 18 was uh, going all the way back to the very beginning of the year. So uh, interesting things with the VIX. I look at it now. It's not a trading vehicle for me anymore because uh, I just find it far more difficult. Been right on direction with the VIX and the way the options prices work. Uh, it could be right on direction and the options still lost money. So like I'm done with the VIX. Uh, I had a good run with it years ago. And so it's just an indicator to watch uh, what volatility is doing. Uh, and I think the VIX is going down like this on the back of those big surges that we've had and the tech stocks that say anything AI. One other thing to think about uh, though on talking about the queues and whether there's potential for that wave three to continue, there is some chatter about perhaps China having to devalue Yuan um, just because the, the the struggles that are going on in China. And if they did that, um, that could actually uh, be another boost from uh, you know an interest rate standpoint for the queues to go higher. So perhaps there's a little bit more to go here. Uh, just thought I would throw that in there as something of interest. Uh, I would like to throw a couple of the uh, foreign markets in. We'll take a look at the Aussie market. Uh, been a lot of interest in that on Tuesday night in Trade Finder. Uh, we have a lot of uh, Aussie subscribers as well uh, at EWO Trader. And the key here is that we held 22. We broke 23, which is concerning, uh, but we held this test here uh, back on the 7th of June. And we need to get back above 23, I think, before you can start looking long the Aussie market. But at least for now, uh, that's showing that uh, we're at least in a trading range below the 10-day moving average, though. So you'd want to see it back above 23, back above the 50-day moving average if you're looking to be long the Aussie. And if we can, well, then we have some room to run. I mean, all the way potentially back to that previous wave five. But right now, the concern, I think, is more, are we going to break 22? If we were to break 22, then uh, we could be looking uh, all the way down here uh, at these previous lows, and that would certainly uh, not coincide with uh, our markets doing very well either. We're a long way from that. Just uh, a point to note there, we'd have to break 22 with follow through because when we broke it here, no follow through. When we broke it back here in March, no follow through. That's why the other one of the other rules I talk about a lot is when you break a major point of support resistance, break out of a triangle, break a major moving average, you need to have that um, follow through day. A lot of head fakes in the market. You don't want to get sucked in to those. And then uh, last but not least, take a look at the INDA. Um, before I forget, please don't forget to uh, uh, smash that like button or hit subscribe if you haven't already. Um, love to have you uh, uh, as a subscriber. You know the drill. It's, it's helpful. Uh, so that we can get information out to uh, to more people. So uh, love it if you'd smash that like button for us. Um, make another Chuck Norris comment if you want. Uh, I'm going to bring that up because uh, uh, traveling home uh, from the mountains late last night, stopped at uh, a Bucky's. If you're familiar with those, it's a big gas station with almost like a mall inside. Walked in the door, line of uh, kids look like high school kids to me, and uh, heard someone say, you look like Chuck Norris. It was a female voice, and I turned and looked, and she goes, yeah, you, pointed right at me. So there's been a lot of uh, comments about that over time with these uh, with these videos. So hence the hat. That's where the hat came from. So, you know, we've been having uh, a bit of fun with that. But it was interesting to to hear that. And my thought was I smiled at her and said, hey, you don't look old enough to know who Chuck Norris is. Uh, but then my son told me, yeah, I'd be surprised how many memes are still out there regarding it. So anyway, the INDA still looks very strong in a wave three, holding 42 above the 10 day moving average. So we had a nice break, good test. That could be a classic test of a break of support. And it looks like uh, we could be looking for a move up towards that wave five target level. Remember when you're in a wave three, these are uh, time and price projections in these boxes. Uh, and when you're in a wave three, for some reason, the algorithm likes this price. And when you have a very strong wave three, it's possible to go right to that wave five target, even in the wave three. And then these targets reset once you've hit that point. So uh, as long as we can hold above 42, and perhaps we bounce there at the beginning of next week, that's where we could be looking. And it happens to coincide with 
the previous highs going all the way back to the end of last year. And look where that is, right smack in the middle of that box. So the INDA is still looking very strong uh, with everything else that's been going on. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the recording. Thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think as far as the next move on the queues. Are we continuing to go higher? Uh, like to get a conversation. This one we have back and forth, different of opinions. Please don't uh, feel uh, afraid to disagree because differing opinions makes markets. That's how the markets work. And we love to have good, healthy, respectful, respectful conversations. So uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Look forward to talking again next week. Take care. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely gonna go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.